uh, I, I got in, this, in the habit of doing drugs and my mama don't really appreciate that or be going for none of that, so I can't do that at the house. Uh, what type of drugs do you do? Uh, I got addicted to fentanyl, fentanyl and um, I wouldn't say I'm addicted to weed, but I do a lot of weed too and shit like that. So I didn't think I was addicted until I got off, bad off on my own and had to fend for myself and plus my girlfriend and realize that half the things that I'm fending and fighting for is drugs instead of what we really need to be doing. What's up, YouTube? Top Flight USA back with another one. How you doing, brother? How you doing? All right. What's your name, age, and where you from? My name is Parrish McCoy, I'm um, 22, I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. Alright, um, are you homeless? Uh, yes sir, but then, no sir, I, I kind of choose to be out here because I don't want to be at the house. I don't want to be in the house with my dudes. Okay, why is that? Uh, I, I got in, this, in the habit of doing drugs and my mama don't really appreciate that or be going for none of that, so I can't do that at the house, or nor bring it around. And, but mama always seem to know when you high, so you can't can't be there if you that. Right. Uh, what type of drugs do you do? Uh, I got addicted to fentanyl. Fentanyl and um, I wouldn't say I'm addicted to weed, but I do a lot of weed too and shit like that. Okay. How long you been using fentanyl? Uh, it's been two years now. All right. Two years ago, what exactly caused you to start using fentanyl? Uh, my current girlfriend now and. But she was my friend back then. We uh we started popping perks way back in the day when they first came out, and from then the high progressed. Cause you got the pills that we went from to the actual fentanyl. The pills had fentanyl in it, and once you keep doing pills, you get a higher tolerance. So our tolerance built, and we went to something harder. Okay. Did you understand the damage and consequences when you started uh, popping the the real perks? I didn't understand it then because it wasn't really affecting me. I wasn't necessarily, I didn't, my mind was stronger than the high. So I didn't think I was addicted until I got off, bad off on my own and had to fend for myself and plus my girlfriend and realized that half the things that I'm fending and fighting for is drugs instead of what we really need to be doing. Okay, so how long do you think of using it before you really got dependent on it? I'll say a full, either a full year or at least nine months. Okay. All right. Well, um, let's talk about your childhood and your upbringing a little bit. All right. Did you grow up in a two-parent household? Uh, no, sir. I grew up with my mom, but I also did go visit my dad every now and then because as a child, he wasn't never around. I didn't really meet him and start going to visit him until I was like 16. Uh, when I was in middle school, my uncle did come, and he, uh, my mom had kicked me out. I was, I think it was my first year in middle school or my last year in middle school. I was still in middle school, though. She kicked me out, and my uncle had came and picked me up. And from then, he had, he had, he had made me a promise, and I, I completed the promise, and I brought him home an AB Honor Roll uh, court card. It was my first time ever having an AB Honor Roll, and after I did it, I ended up leaving him, and I realized that that was the best place in my life that I was, but the reason I left him was because my mama threatened to call the police on him, because at that time, she wanted me back. And it's like, how you gonna push your child away at just a kid? I didn't expect him to come back when you called for him. I didn't get that. So I had resentment towards her. Did you ever tell her about that? Like we spoke about it, but she was more, she was more stuck in the, the argument we had before, because she had put my sister out that same, that same week. My sister was three years older than me, but she was pregnant. And I had watched her beat my, beat my sister up in the car with the social worker that day. And my sister had texted me and called her a bitch. And me just protecting my sister, I was like, yeah, you know how mama is. And she took that as me calling her a bitch and ran with it. Okay. So it kind of sounded like you grew up in an abusive household. I uh, definitely did. Abusive household, abusive lifestyle. Everything was abuse to me. So I got used to it. I didn't, I didn't look at it as abuse. It was love to me. Okay. How do you think that made you feel at that point, knowing that, okay, mom dude's kind of giving tough love. Like, how do you think that made you turn out? It made me a lot colder. And I, I, I think I can absorb a lot more pain than a lot of more people out here because I'm used to it. It's all I knew. Like, that's just, 
the way I was raised. Okay. Um, do you have any kids? Uh, no, sir. All right. Um, what type of neighborhood did you grow up in uh, with your mother? Did you grow up in the hood? Oh, or? We definitely grew up in the hood. We grew up in Raleigh North, um, Brown Bird, Bragg Street. We moved around a lot. My mama moved every two months. So I couldn't sit still. I never got the home feeling. I knew eventually we were going to move and be back in the car. Eventually we were going to move somewhere. I'm going to be back in the country doing something else. I never got used to no surroundings. Okay. So um, who did you like staying with better, your mom or your dad? Uh, I'd say my, between my mom and my dad is my mom, but between my mom and my uncle, who actually raised me and made me do better, I choose him every time. Cause he's the only person I feel wanted better for me. Okay, your uncle. Yes, sir. So are you still in contact with him right now? Yes, sir. So how, how does he feel about you being out here? Oh, he hates every bit of it. He wants me to, um, to come home back to him and get my CDLs and drive trucks with him, but... I can't get my mind to leave where I'm at and who I'm with. So we just been in a standstill. He probably upset with me right now. Wow. So you currently in a relationship out here? Yes, sir. Okay. Where's your girlfriend at now? Uh, she actually just got locked up yesterday. She had a probation violation. So, uh, yeah, that's how that went. And I don't want to be gone when she get back or None of that, so I feel like I'm gonna just stay here and wait for her. This is the last place I've seen her. She know where to come to here. Okay, is this where you met her at? Uh, nah, we uh we met back in school actually, but I moved her out of her mama house and she's been staying with me. And my parents don't like her, so I can't bring her home. So we've been staying out here. Why don't your parents like her? Cause they know that she got me doing fentanyl and we do drugs, so they're not having none of that. Okay. Um, why won't you take this opportunity to try to get clean while she locked up? Um, that's what I'm planning on doing, but it's right now I'm dealing still in the pain stage because she just just got locked up last, yesterday, so last night really. So I was just doing a little bit to get over the pain, but my long term, because she should be in there for a couple weeks, is definitely to get off. Okay. Uh, do she have like a bond or something like that? Uh, I don't know yet, but with probation violations, you don't get a bond. Okay, so she pretty much just have to sit. She gonna have to do her time. Until the next court date or something. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you think that'd be the best decision for her? I definitely do think it's the best decision for her. Definitely do. Okay. So between you and her, uh, who has the like stronger addiction? It's her. It's her, but I, I'm not gonna say just her because I'm addicted to her too. So it, it evens out. If she addicted to something, I'm gonna be as addicted to it because I'm gonna make sure she got what she got, what she want. Okay. It sounds like you care a lot about her. I definitely do. That's my heart. Yeah, that it'll be wonderful if y'all both can come together to get y'all stuff out this situation. And then maybe you take that road uh, your uncle was trying to take you down. Yes, sir. Uh, CDLs, you know, that's a good career. I know a lot of brothers getting out of the feds, getting out of prison, and getting their CDLs and doing their thing right now. You right, know, so too. that's definitely a good idea. Um, just a, a couple more questions before we end the interview. Have you ever been diagnosed with any mental disorders? No, sir. Okay, um, how do you make your money out here? Uh, really, I be doing work for people. Like I go ask people in they, and they are around the area if they want a yard work, or I go to Sam's Club asking the old people if they want help unloading their, their loads from the stores and stuff like that. I'm still very active, active out here. Like I don't just let the drugs control me. I still like to help the community and help other people too while I do while I get my money. Okay, uh, so. Why can't you just find a job and, and go to work right now? Uh, my sister currently got my ID. She's in uh, Fayetteville, so I'm just waiting for her to bring it down here, and I'm going back to work. I was just working at Jersey Mike's. Okay. I used to work there full time. How long ago was that? About six months ago. Okay. All right. Um, would you say it's dangerous being homeless? It's very dangerous because I'm not going to say people-wise or like, people, like things coming to hurt you, but it's more dangerous 
the stuff you're aware, the stuff you are surrounded by, by being out here around them times and them times when nobody out here, you'll see a lot more shit than you ever normally see in these streets. Okay, so what's the craziest thing you've seen out here so far? <laughs> shit. <laughs> I done seen people do do idiotic things for small amounts of weed or small amounts of drugs just to get by. You feel me? Just just to do anything. Like people hungry out here. It's like it's like an apocalypse happened. And people got down, you feel me, go to desperate measures. So for the viewers that don't know nothing about this lifestyle, mm -hmm. could you describe what you have seen? I describe it as chaos because it's chaos ain't a sanity because people gonna come back and do the same thing expect a different outcome. <laughs> okay. Um, would you say it's your addiction that's holding you back right now? It's definitely a big part of it, but it's mostly my girlfriend because I can't leave her. I can't, whatever she gonna do, I'm gonna be right beside her. So I can't just say it's the addiction. It might just be my addiction to her. I don't know, but right now, that's what it is. Okay. All right. How are we going to get ourselves out of this situation? Uh, better in our situation. That's, that goes for me and her. So once I can get us back in a, another apartment or find us a stable home somewhere, then we can start the that, that journey because we still got to get her son back. I told you I don't have a child, but I claim her son. So I got to get him back, back around, our, right back in our family. That's what's hurting both of us for real. Another reason we've been both on drugs. Okay, so who has the child right now? This way, her mother, his grandma. Okay, that's good. At least the state don't. Yes, sir. Have custody over the child. All right. So if it was any kids watching this video, what could you tell them about addictions and homelessness? Hmm. Um, this shit ain't what you want to be, man. At all. All them stories your parents telling you that you don't want to listen to, you think just bullshit stories or them just babbling to keep you out the streets. It ain't true. You don't want to be out here. It get hard, it get cold, and you get hungry. And when you can't, it's different when you can go back to the house just because you want to be out here outside for a little bit. But when you don't got that stability no more, it'll break people. It'll break a lot of people, hard people too. Right. And uh, what could you tell them about addictions? Shit. One, I could tell you, fentanyl is a hell of a drug. This ain't nothing you want to get on. Because you're going to have cold sweats, hot sweats, body sores, and... Just like most drugs, most common drugs, you can wake up next morning and feel fine. You wake up next morning without this and don't got it, you gonna hurt. And until you go get something to feel that hurt, you gonna be in pain. I mean, chronic pain. Okay. All right. Well, um, I think that's gonna wrap it up, man. Um, you seem very knowledgeable, man. You seem yeah. like a smart individual. I definitely am. I got a full head on my shoulders. I just. Fucked up right now. Fucked up. Yeah, I want to give you my card, man. I want you to stay in touch with me. No um, I believe me and you can connect in a lot of ways. So I see something inside of you, man, that's shining real bright. Thank you. Man. And um, this ain't the end for you. I appreciate uh, it. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. We can end it off right there. Thank you, brother, for doing this interview. God bless you. You too. God bless y'all. All right.